Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, I want to kind of summarize um, what some of my previous videos on the Amazon rainforest are really saying. <clears throat> you know, talk about some of the, the key points that we can deduce. So, in the, in the last video, I got started getting into this um, blog from Yadvinder Mali. And he's an ecosystem ecologist and professor of ecosystem science at Oxford University. And he was asked by many people, does the Amazon provide 20% of our oxygen? Okay, and the answer to that is um, basically uh, no. Okay, the statement is incorrect and it's based on a partial understanding of how ecosystems function. Okay. Um, so there's lots of reasons to be concerned about the um, Amazon and the current fires, including regional climate, human health effects of pollution, loss of biodiversity, loss of the most biodiverse rich area of the planet, and global carbon emissions. But running out of oxygen isn't one of them. Okay, so... I'll just go quickly on the first part because I discussed it at the end of last video towards the end, but because it's so important, I, I, will, I will reiterate it. Okay, so the tropical forests account for about 34% of global terrestrial photosynthesis. Should be land or terrestrial in here. Okay, this is the figure here. This shows the gross primary productivity for each major land biome. 3,500 grams of carbon is absorbed per square meter of air surface area in these regions here. These are the um, tropical rainforests of the planet. The Amazon comprises about half of the total. It's much bigger than the African rainforest and Indonesian island chain rainforest. Okay, so it's about half of the total. Um, you can get a cumulative value over the whole earth and then you can get the ratio of the carbon that's captured by the amazon rainforest you can also multiply the cumulative numbers in petagrams of carbon times 2.67 to get the petagrams of oxygen that is produced and essentially the amazon um, total oxygen production by photosynthesis on land is about 330 petagrams of oxygen per year the Amazon, which is just under half of the tropical forest, it's about 16% of this, around 54 petagrams of oxygen per year. Okay, and that 16% number is, is often rounded up and considered to be the, ratio, the, the fraction of the overall globe, but it's only the fraction of the land photosynthesis. <clears throat> okay, you need to add in the phytoplankton to get the overall amount. This is the land biomes. Okay, the tropical forest, this is the gross primary productivity in petagrams of carbon per year in tropical forests. It's about a third of the total. The Amazon's about half of this, which would be about 20. 20 over 121 is about a six. That gives you the 16% number. Um, so, but phytoplankton generate about 240 petagrams of oxygen per year. Okay, so global photosynthesis, land and sea, produces about 570 petagrams of oxygen per year. Okay, 43% is from the ocean, 57% is from the land, and the Amazon part of the land is, is actually 9.5% by my calculation. It says contributes about 9%. Okay, <clears throat> but the, the Amazon consumes about as much oxygen as it produces, okay? So basically, you've got your trees here and they produce the oxygen by photosynthesis. Okay, that's gross primary production. Um, okay, well, they, they produce, you know, you can get the gross primary production from, from this plot and from these different biomes in petagrams of carbon per year and you can multiply by 2.67 to get the oxygen produced. Okay, so we've got the photosynthesis producing oxygen, building up the trees. We've got plant respiration using some of the oxygen. We've got microbial respiration, uh, you know, litter fall and dead wood. Okay, so if you take the whole cycle here, 
um, you don't actually get much oxygen added to the overall atmosphere. But get rid of all of the trees and you greatly reduce the resilience of oxygen production on the earth because it would all then come from the oceans. And you know how the oceans are threatened and heating, you know, and phytoplankton growth is reduced in the oceans. So, you know, we lose all resiliency in the climate system if we start losing these major, um, very important uh, biomes, including the, the uh, rainforests of the planet. Now, but the point is that the oxygen, the atmosphere is awash in oxygen at 20.95% or 209,500 parts per million. CO2 is about 415 now, about 500 times less than oxygen. It's rising at 2 to 3 ppm per year. Human activity, around 90% of which is fossil fuel combustion, it's also land use change, has caused this oxygen concentration to drop about 0.005% since 1990, so a small percentage. But the same activities have caused carbon dioxide concentrations to increase by about 37 ppm since 1990, or 10%. Okay, the CO2 level is much smaller to begin with, so this is a substantial percentage. Okay, this is why we need to worry about the increase of CO2 in the atmosphere, and we don't need to worry about running out of oxygen. I hope that's clear. Okay, so the question was asked about the effectively net zero contribution of the Amazon to our oxygen supply. Um, to be clear, when a tree is planted on deforested land, it absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and locks it away in biomass. Following the same old balance of photosynthesis, an equivalent amount of oxygen is released to the atmosphere. If we were to plant up an area the size of the Amazon rainforest, so 390 billion trees, if we were to plant that, around 90 petagrams of carbon would be removed from the atmosphere, and atmospheric carbon dioxide would be lowered by about 40 ppm or 10%, okay, that's for 390 billion trees, okay, essentially in the, in the Amazon. On the other hand, if the entire Amazon rainforest were to go up in flames, you know, I say heaven forbid, something also unrealistic. Well, is it so realistic now? You know, if the thing was to collapse and convert to savanna? Anyway, if we lost the entire Amazon rainforest, Atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations would rise by 10%, or about 40 ppm, and it would be almost impossible to keep global climate warming within safe boundaries, such as 1.5 degrees Celsius, or 2 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> now, using the same argument, burning up the whole Amazon rainforest would use up how much oxygen? It would be basically 90 petagrams of carbon times 2.67, Right, which is, gives you about 240 petagrams of, this, shouldn't, this carbon C shouldn't be there, 240 petagrams of oxygen, causing oxygen concentrations to drop 0.02%, an almost negligible amount because there is so much oxygen in the atmosphere. Okay, so I hope that, um, you know, explains things. And this is, so the key points, um, the key points about the Amazon being a, vulnerable tipping point and i think i'll you know put it in context of some of the other tipping points um is that um you know it's not an oxygen issue okay it's a it's a carbon issue the amazon rainforest you know has enormous growth <coughs> of vegetation so it absorbs huge amounts of carbon and it produces huge amounts of oxygen, even on a global scale. You know, not the numbers that people have been quoting, <coughs> slightly lower, not, not 20% <coughs> of the total, but 9.5% <coughs> roughly of global oxygen production from photosynthesis. You know, according to the best of my knowledge, according to the, the, the numbers, you know, from my analysis of this. Okay. Um, the problem is, is that, you know, it's a highly balanced system. Okay, it needs the dust from the Sahel Desert to blow across and hit the Amazon rainforest to fertilize the rainforest to get the forest growth. 
Okay, that's one thing. So if the circulation patterns change and the dust no longer hits the Amazon but misses to other regions, this could cause a huge collapse <coughs> of the Amazon rainforest. The other thing that's happening is that the, the trade winds carry the moist air over the land from the, um, from the Atlantic Ocean here. And the rainfall is falls, is transpired, falls, is transpired. So there's a chain of recycled rainfall over the entire Amazon. And just to remind you, um, it's in this paper. Where is it? Here we go. Okay, um, let's go up. Okay, this is the key image to remember. Okay, moisture comes in falls as rain, transpires up, creates more moisture in the, in the clouds, and the cycle continues. And if we start killing, if we start getting rid of vast areas of the rainforest, as is happening, right, then uh, we run into problems because we break this cycle. We shorten the cycle for one thing, and we can eventually break the whole cycle because the moist air coming over, you know, if it falls over the land, uh, you know, sort of if this is all no longer forest but this is savanna and soy plantations and livestock plantations and the forest over here just dries out and, and dies basically it doesn't get it doesn't get the water this recycling condition basically halts and the whole thing collapses when might this happen okay we've got rid of um and i think um I think I came across this in some of the, uh, you know, the wiki um, information here. Uh, when does the thing collapse? Okay, I don't remember where I saw it. But the number I remember, and you can check this number, is that we've lost about 17% or so. Um, of the original rainforest, some people say about 20. The estimate is that if we lose another three to uh, three to eight percent, we could cross this threshold where the water recycling um, stops. Okay, so and if the watering recycling stops, then we get dieback cascading all the way across the rest of the remaining forest. Okay, so this is why we, we have a huge problem here. Okay, we have a, have a huge problem here. Now, this is a very important map because, you know, this is a huge problem. The Arctic sea ice, the decline, the rapid decline of the Arctic sea ice, you know, unless there's powerful negative feedbacks that keep it around, the trends are all for, you know, sea ice loss, first blue ocean events. Not gonna happen this year. Um, you know, I thought for a while it would happen probably before 22, but now I'm not so sure because of the, these uh, possible negative feedbacks. Maybe some of this, maybe a small amount of ice will remain right at the North Pole for a period of time. And that would be different from, you know, this, the view of scientists, mainstream scientists to now. Many, even the def definition of a blue ocean event, you know, or no sea ice is less than a million square kilometers. And people thought, you know, many scientists thought, well, that'll be just fast ice. That'll be ice stuck around the borders of the Atlantic Ocean next to the land. But it turns out that, you know, uh, we're losing that ice very quickly. It's at lower latitudes, right? It might be a little bit of ice circulating right around the North Pole that's left because of uh, the geometry of, of the uh, sun. The, the angle of incidence of the light is much more glazing, much more glazing, much more gra grazing incidence, and uh, the reflectivity is much higher. So, you know, this is obviously a big tipping point. Looks like we've reached this tipping point with tropical coral reefs. Uh, we're having problems with the monsoon, right? There's a whole cascading problem. Um, so we're basically, in a, we're in a climate emergency, right? Um, the Amazon is just, you know, it, it adds to this um, cascading feedback, um, uh, 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 ca uh, it adds to cascading feedbacks, which can destabilize the, the whole planet. Anyway, thank you for, for listening. 
um, to this series. Bye for now.